not all that bad. It's not too choppy, just a little bit. And so um, before in the car, my dad was telling us all these rules that we would need to follow when we were paddling down the river. And so um, we thought like, why would we need all of these rules? We're just gonna be floating down the river. We're just gonna, you know, go have fun. It didn't seem like we would need all of these complicated rules and we didn't think anything was gonna happen. It was just a normal day. And then when we got further into the river, there were some huge rapids and I was put at the front of the canoe and my dad was telling me to paddle as fast as I could or else the boat would tip. And so <laughs> I was paddling as fast and hard as I could and then um, all of a sudden this huge wave was coming up and I was literally just frozen solid. Like I couldn't move because I was just petrified with fear. <laughs> and I could just hear my dad faintly yelling to me in the background, just keep paddling or we're gonna flip. And I was just stiff, like I couldn't move. <laughs> And so before I knew it, the boat had tipped over and um, I was drowning in the water. And I it pretty much felt like I passed out. I wasn't really fully conscious. And so this is like one of the scariest times in my life. And then eventually I felt like I'd just woken up from a dream and I was above the water trying to stay afloat in this deep water in these crazy rapids and so I see my sister um, and she's clinging on to like a bush in the middle of the rapids in the middle of the river trying to hang on to the bush and hang on to the, the canoe or else it was going to float down the river so um, then I saw a paddle floating near me I grabbed the paddle and I started swimming towards my sister and um, we couldn't really go anywhere else except in the middle of the river, cling onto this bush for our lives so that we wouldn't be, so I'd been like pulled under in a, whir in a whirlpool or something earlier. And so we didn't want anything like that to happen to us. So we just had to cling on. And so here we were clinging onto the bush to prevent us from drowning, cling onto the canoe, to prevent the canoe from floating down the river or else we'd have no, no raft to climb into, keep going down the river. And we were clinging on to the paddle so that we could have a paddle to paddle our, ourselves back down the river. Now meanwhile, the rest of our family had just like floated on their back down the river quite a ways until they reached the landing port they were, where they could sit on the shore. Oh, like your dad and your other younger yeah. siblings had got separated from the boat and the paddles in the bush? Yeah. And you and Brianna? Uh-huh, so Brianna and I were pretty scared at this point. The current was pulling super strong. We were just clinging onto this bush and everything else that I said we were clinging onto. Mm -hmm. And we didn't really have a big plan in mind. So. We said a prayer and um, then we waved a little bit and then <coughs> we said a prayer again that somebody could come and help us and as soon as our prayer was done, these random people um, paddling on their rafts came down the river just out of nowhere. We hadn't seen them before and it was this young couple who was just going for a ride down the river like we were. And they saw us and they came and they helped us pull our boat um, out from being pulled by the current. And they helped us get back into our canoe with our paddle and everything. And they gave us a push off and we thanked them. And we went on our way and picked up our family and finished the rest of our river raft. But um, that was one of the big times in my life that I've been able to recognize the Holy Ghost and the Lord's hand in my life because we were able to 
get out of that really scary situation and we did die and people came and helped us so I know that if we have faith and if we turn to the Lord that he will help us and I say these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen, Amen. significant that in your moment of like desperation and need the thing that you wanted that you naturally did was to pray um, that's instinctual it's really cool thank you I think we all probably have some anchors anchor experiences something like what Sylvia shared or what others have shared Bailey shared an experience with with a group prayer and a miracle that came about on behalf of somebody that they knew. Like, we have these anchoring experiences, and you don't get a whole lot of those. Those don't happen every day. But they're so important to recognize when they do happen for what they are and to write them down, because over time we tend to maybe... Um, hi, how are you? Somebody forget a, something? Here, I'll just... Um, write those things down because over time we can start to talk ourselves out of the um, the value and the the, the, the uh, spiritual value of what happened and can tend to just put it off to coincidence or some other happenstance. So thanks for sharing that and I think we'll hear more of those kinds of anchoring experiences perhaps from the rest of us as we do our personal shares. Um, okay, Adam, can you come up and do what must be done? Take a look at these, see if we've got enough water in here. We've got to use this bottle to spritz the plants, all of them, including that one. That one might, might need a little bit more water. It looks like it's getting low. Then we've got to put a penny from today into tomorrow's pig. Okay. Um, do you have to ask a questions? Grab a candy, ask a question, we'll get to them. Um, yes? Oh, the, the, the fertilizer. It's already ready to just drop in. Um, really obvious, right? But I don't know if it's so obvious. I, I don't think I want to assume that we all believe all the same things. I mean, we've been taught the same things. But what do we accept and what do we live by? If I were to take a silent video of your life, black and white, anybody seen any black and white like old silent films? Pretty cool, right? There's actually a lot you can communicate without all the color and without all the, the dialogue. Pretty surprising, but if I was to take a black and white silent video of your life and only see what you do, I don't know what you're thinking necessarily, I don't hear what you're saying, I only see what you do, your actions. Would your actions define that you are a Christian? What do you do because of what you believe? Something to think about, right? If all I had was the evidence of your life in a court of law, and you couldn't defend yourself, only your actions could defend you, what would your actions say about what you, what you believe? Think about that, hey? Okay, I'm um, going to get to some final intros here. I think we had Jet, Adam, and Taylor. Anybody else? Don't want to miss anybody. My list disappeared. Okay, so let's go in that order. 
I don't have the questions on the board anymore either. Do you remember what they were? We don't know what about you, right? What you're into, the place what you like, age, what school, what you like, what you dislike, what you fear. Some things you love, yes. Something, something you dislike. Yes, yes, something you're afraid of. And what you want to get out of the class. Okay. Um, I'm Janet Laughlin, and I'm in 10th grade at RHS. Um, I love music and movies. So you create music, uh, right? still do or did? More so did. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Have you had a bad experience with roller coasters, or is it just something you've always been afraid of? Uh, both. Both. Yeah. Anybody else been scared of roller coasters? Yeah. They can be really scary. All right. Thank you, Jeff. traumatized you this morning? <laughs> Some things you love. I like playing games with my friends. Like sports games, D&D &D games. games. Huh? Video games. Video games. Grandma's funeral? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, I 
I was supposed to play the piano. Come to find out, they don't have a piano there. And then, they, so we brought in a keyboard, and it, the pedal was backwards. So whenever you press the pedal, it let go of the dampers. Oh. So it was like, and I'd never gotten to play on that keyboard beforehand. So I was accompanying some people. Let's just say it was the worst performance I've ever had in my life. It was terrible. <laughs> but so it goes from bad to worse. I mean, you're at a funeral, and it's your grandma's funeral, and then you. Yeah, I absolutely. Some comforting it. song is it's all for you. Yeah, and they didn't let me play Prelude to Warm Up or anything. It was just <laughs> not great. Poor so guy. stuff like that, I'm not a fan of. Uh huh. Not great. But all right. Well, we'll see if we can set you up for failure as much as possible in this class. Yeah. I'll put you on the spot as much as I can and give you broken tools to use. Yeah. That'll better probably work. Anybody else like Brandon Sanderson? Right? That's the author. What books are those? We did like Way of Kings. Oh, that's the one you were telling me when we were picking pairs. Yeah, right? Mistborn, Elantris. Who else reads those books? I've read the list. Okay. Cool. Well, thanks. I think we got everybody then? Cool. You're working on your two getting to know you sheets that they need to get after class? Uh, I think that's all kind of the, the catch up stuff. So, what I want to do, do we have. Class is up today, i got to let you go about 9.22. That's not a whole lot of time for discussion, but we'll start it. Now, you guys have been thinking a lot. You know, I think about you all the time. Actually, throughout almost every day, I'm like, okay, I, I want to present this concept. How am I going to do that? How am I going to lead them through this discussion? I don't like to lecture. I want to have discussion and opinions and ideas shared. So, like, I think about you a lot. And... One thing I've realized is that we have a lot of freshmen in here who haven't had seminary ever, um, even though we're like in the middle of the Doctrine and Covenants, right? So you don't know all the things that came before, perhaps, if you haven't studied them. And there's a lot that we've covered that you, I'll say, I don't know, covered in seminary that you have missed out on thus far. Um, so for those who've been in my class, you may hear some discussions presented like again. That'll be good review for a few of you who've been in my classes before. Um, and you'll have something to contribute. So today is one of those. Now I've heard, that what, does anybody recall what are the first two doctrinal masters that were shared in this class? They were the same one two days in a row. The f day one, day two, same doctrinal mastery. Remember what it was? Let's go to DNC one. Who shared them? You shared one, and then it was you? Yeah, DNC 130. So let's open that up. This is a doctrinal mastery. If you haven't marked it, I encourage you to mark it. But we've got to unpackage this. If we don't get through it all today, we'll continue the discussion tomorrow. Um, so let's see. You guys going to need your scriptures open over here. If it's a digital copy or if you've got a physical copy, go ahead and open up your scriptures. And let's have um, Bailey. Would you read that? Uh, DNC 130. Um, Not 130. It's yeah. section 1, verse 30. And also those who the commandments were given might have power to lay the foundation of this church and to bring it forth out of obstruction and out of darkness. The only true living church upon the face of the floor, which I, the Lord, alone will be speaking unto the church collectively and not individually. Okay, so this was shared, and there were some, you know, comments made, and I thought, we're going to clarify some of this. Let's clarify. So you've heard this before, right? Fill in the blanks for me. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I oh, not, not lit. Filled in correctly. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'd like to, or rather... Bear my testimony. I know the church is true. Like, have you said that before? You know, as a kid growing up, and then you're, you're like, cool. What do you mean? And you're like, I'm not too sure. <laughs> Everyone else says it when they stand up here, so I do too. <laughs> Why? Well, because I'm a good child, and I want to please my parents. And be accepted by the pack.
by saying and doing all the right things. Isn't that why? As little kids, we don't really have an idea, really, what, we're, what we really mean by that, as maybe you would think now. So then you're like, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're telling the truth. I don't actually know, but this is what I'm doing. I'm doing what I see other people doing because I want to be good and I want to be part of that. Isn't that true? A lot of people go to church. Why do you go to church? Uh, I don't know. It's just because like everybody else is going that I know. And everybody, my family sort of makes me go or, or whatever. Like, why do we do the things we do in this gospel? Why do you do the religious, spiritual things you do? You've got to think about that and be intentional about it. There is something to be said for being a good child, wanting to fit in, wanting to please our parents and our, our elders who are in our tribe. Right? We want to be part of that and show that we are part of the program. We're not outsiders. So, what I want to do is really get into what we mean by I know the church is true. So that phrase is powerful. The only true and living church upon the face of the earth. Let's talk about church. Let's talk about church, baby. What do we mean by church? What do you mean when you say church? There are different things that the church means, right? We have to disentangle and, and se separate the things that church means to us. So let's say church. What is the church? Oh. Here it is. Uh-oh. Better get ready. It's coming at you. What do you mean by church? Give it a shot. I can throw this too, but yeah. Okay, community, people, right? Okay, the church is people. So I'm just, what, what do I do here? We've got like heads of people, right? You know, it's like one of those crowd pictures. So it's like people, all right? The church is people. Yeah. Okay. What else is the church? Yes, people. Okay, a belief system. All right, we'll, we'll maybe call that like, um, maybe that's like, this is a book, okay? It's, it's, and there's like light shooting out of, is that yellow? Okay, but it's like, whoa, you know, it's like the doctrine. It's the doctrines we believe, all right? Okay, good. Okay, what else is the church? Keep separating it. You have ideas? I know you do. I'm not really serious, but I'm waiting. Okay, good. How do we do that? I'm going to put that in the same place as doc as the doctor. So let's go. Let's do this. Okay. Keep thinking. So we have we have people. Members. Community, you say, right? We have doctrine. We have ordinances. Let's see doctrine, we have and teachings. Okay, I'll put up there ordinances. We can do that separate. I'm gonna draw that use this symbol right here. It's water and you're going into the water, right? It's like that. Okay, what else? It's a physical place. Okay, great. So it's actually like an institution. So say it, it's a it's a building, but it's a place to gather. So it's a religious organization. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to. Do we have a symbol that's our symbol? Just like Christ. Christ is our symbol. Yeah, yes. but there's. We'll do that. So let's let me just simplify it down to the cross. Okay? Even though we don't really use that as our symbol, right? But we know what we mean. 
But there are others. So th that puts us into the, the camp when we're talking about this of all of the other religious institutions. So it's an organization, right? So we've got like, um, let's see, I can draw if I can draw the Om. We've got like Buddhism. We've got Hindu Hinduism. We've got um, what is this one? God. Oh, we've got the the moon and the star. But I know that there's something for being Jewish. I just don't know what that. Oh yeah, the Jewish called. rights. I just know that they have their star. Yeah, it goes I don't like know this. what their religion is called. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Star of David. Okay, so that in that sense, it's an institution or an organization, right? Is there anything else that... Okay, we can start there. That's fine. So what happens is a lot of people will say, okay, the church is true. All right? What do we mean? We mean the people are true. We mean the ordinances are true. We mean the organization, the structure, the socio-political entity that it is like all the other churches, it's true. So let's, over here now, let's write down a list of ideas of what we mean by true. If that's what the church is, various meanings, then what do we mean by true? Because true also has various meanings. Go here and then pass it to Charles. Uh, doctrinal teachings and processes. So anything in the scriptures is what I'd say most churches would say is their form of truth. Okay, what makes them true though? Well, make the scriptural teachings are true because what? Uh, well, for us, it's because it was revealed by God through Joseph Smith, and we translate or he translated it, and we have it now. For others, it's because like the Bible, it came from back then all the way to now, and like it, a, to them, it's the literal just translated the literal book that was written back then when he was on the earth. Okay, how do I do this? Then You're saying different things, so well, one, one thing I'm getting is... Um, for us, it's because we got direct revelation for the Book of Mormon that it is true. For others, it's that they had it and have based their religion off of it, like the Bible. They, a lot of, like, a lot of Christian churches base it off the Bible. Okay, They're so I'm gonna I'm gonna pick that out for you from there. You, you know, you I said you're wrong about some of them. No, no, you're great. I'm just gonna pick out one of the things you said. Historical significance or tradition. It's true because it's been done so much. It's true because it's so old. Okay, that could be one definition of truth. You agree with that? All things that are old or traditional must be true because they've stuck around for so many hundreds, thousands of years. Does that make them true? It's a question. Uh, give it to Iowa first. Yeah. Oh, he did that? Okay, then you can pass it over. Give it to Iowa. Oh, is that true? Let's see. <laughs> um, well, during the apostasy, uh, it kind of like split up, and um, certain churches stuck centering on it. But with our church, we have all of them. All of what? Teachings, right? The doctrines. We say, it, so the apostasy broke down the church that Jesus made, and so he came back and put it back together. So we're saying we have all, so let's put that here. We'll say that it's complete. It's true because it's complete. And I'll put accurate. Yeah? We have it all. Okay. Do we? Have it all? It's a question to ask. We'll get to it in a second. Did you pass the ball? Okay, he's got it. Um, so on the idea of tradition, my tiny little thought on that is that maybe it's not necessarily that because it's been done so much, it's true, but maybe it's that we have faith and trust in the testimonies that have been given from those people back then or that type of stuff. And the thing I was going to say was sometimes why the church is true is that we trust our leaders and that they receive the revelation and guidance 
from the true leader of this church, which is Jesus Christ. The, the, his church. Like, and that was another thing I was thinking about when you were talking about like the different parts of a church. A leader is part of a church. Because I don't really know any organization or religious type thing that doesn't have a leader of some sort, you know? And sometimes it's easy to think, oh, the prophet is, I mean, I guess, yes, the leader of the church, but Jesus Christ is really the leader of the church. Mm -hmm. So trusting the leaders that we have here on earth, that's an assumption. I mean, I don't know. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, yes. Because you weren't there in the sacred grove. No. Right? So there's some trust that Joseph's story, like he's telling the truth, and all the prophets since him, does that mean that you're only going on trusting this charismatic leader? No, we have a lot more resources, such as the Holy Ghost, to help us understand what is true, right? Good. What other assumption about why the church is true? Anything else to add to that? Okay, I want to add one, and that's that it's perfect. So maybe accurate should not go up there, because that's more in the line of perfect. We'll say infallible. False fallacy. So infallible means it can't fall. It can't be imperfect. Right? Okay, good. So do we, any of us hold any? Oh, yes, one more to add. Adam. Yes, thank you. Good. I assigned somebody last year to like be my my watchdog on the clock. So I get so into lesson plans that I totally lose track. So this is, as far as we got on this, is assumptions why the church is true. We've got a lot more to go through, because here's what happens. I'll just give you sort of the point, and then tomorrow we'll continue the discussion. Which is, if we have these assumptions about the church, and they don't play out the way we believe they should, then we might come to the wrong conclusion that the church is not true. So we're setting a foundation here for thinking correctly when we say the church is true. What do we really mean? So that our foundation is solid, our thinking is correct. Okay? Thank you, Adam. Thank you, everybody who's participated today. Appreciate you. Hopefully an extra few minutes to get back to class. That gives you like roughly 10 minutes or something, right, before the next bell. Okay. I'll leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Who's going to give thanks? I have a prayer. Who's turn? Okay, Charlie. Thank you. Thanks, Stella.